Look. See the woods. I remember seeing this on the map. And on the info. It said that there was a beach and walk woodland walk and red squirrels. So um more squirrel dedicated squirrel area off to the right to a car park. We'll go back to that in a little while. Let's go for a walk first. I want to find a bench to sit and chat. So, how about this here? Just gonna have a look. Oh, it's a crow. Okay, this might be all right here. So can you believe it? I've got a helicopter coming over and I want to talk into my <laughs> my phone. <sighs> so I just want to chat about what's happening in my life right now because there's been some big changes so as you know I was working for um, the council as a minibus driver for the school and I absolutely loved it and um, I was turned up every day didn't matter if I was sick I turned up annoyed the children because I was sniveling one day because I had a terrible cold and hacking and coughing but I turned up every day and I loved the job and I loved looking after the kids but come the end of July, the end of term, I knew that I was absolutely terrified about going back in as a spare and sitting in that canteen with those women. And even with the fellas, some of them really thought me quite weird. And I don't blame them. Because I really was quite different. One minute I was smiley and happy. The next minute I was quiet and closed off. And that was all about the acting. It was all about dealing with the situation each time it came along. So... I asked if I could just be put on the school runs all the time, meaning that I wouldn't work through August, uh, July, the rest of July and August, and then back in September. But I was told to do that, I would have to resign and reapply at the SEN area of the council, which is where the children's transport runs from. So. This was by my manager. Uh, same day I went home at lunchtime, wrote up my resignation. When I came back in the, after lunch, I gave it to him. I said, right, there's my two weeks notice. <sighs> so I've moved the camera a bit because um, I've just had a look at it see if you can see me at all and if you can hear me so um i work till the end of term hang on i just need to switch it off again so where was i yeah, so I'd worked really hard all through the summer, um, all through, you know, December, right through to July on my minibus. And I had to deal with my escort lady who came with me. Ooh. I hope that's not getting in your way. And she knew I was autistic and, you know, she knew that when I did funny things like stop talking or... Um, say something that she couldn't understand. She was fine with it, she was. We got on really well. But it was still very, very stressful for me. Every day was stressful, I had to act every day. And, um, you know, when I was had to have conversation with her in the bus, that was always very difficult. And as soon as I dropped the kids off and her off home and um, was taking my minibus back to the centre, I could breathe. And that's how it's always been for me. 
when I was doing my airport transfers. I loved chatting to my customers, but as soon as I dropped them off, I could breathe. I could have peace and quiet. And that's a very, very difficult thing to have to deal with in life because, you know, it's supposed to be normal. You're supposed to be able to get somewhere and have a chat and saunter off and all of this. Anyway, so I have left. And I've been going for these walks and trying to decide what to do. And indeed, Flex, I've done a couple of jobs for them and they're always around if I need the money. So I've decided just to have some time to myself, get out and do my walks and try and work out what I'm going to do next. I'm not quite sure what that's going to be at the moment. I've got enough money to live on, so I'm happy enough. I put away loads of money when I was working because I didn't need it for anything. I did buy that bike and at the moment that's not being pedalled, but that's for another day. I'll tell you about that. But at the moment, I'm coming out for my walks. I'm thinking about what to do next. And um, yeah, I just wanted to update you on that because you must be wondering what I'm up to. So this is what I'm up to. So thank you for listening to me. And we'll get on with our walk now. I'll see you later. I don't know. Talk about being useless at finding my way around. So I'm going to go this way. I met a lady in walking her doggy and I asked her and she wasn't sure but she said I've got to go along you know off to my right over there can you see the sand dunes probably can't I'm not gonna go for a walk around by these sand dunes um, actually it looks really pretty on the sand it said it had big sand dunes so hopefully If you heard the buzzing, that was Maps trying to tell me that I was hopefully going in the right direction, actually, looking at it. You never know. So, beach to the left, Wicks Lake to the right, or straight on. Um, go down to the beach, what's the map say? So coming up here, up to the sand dunes. Look at that. I don't know whether you can see that. Close up. It's these little plants we've got here growing. A lot of these, you know. They're wild, growing all over the place. I'm not quite sure what they are. Daisies? <laughs> pretty. So there is something about the seaside, isn't there? And the sand dunes, They're really gorgeous. It is incredibly peaceful here. It's absolutely glorious. I struggle so much with normal life. It's really difficult. You know, I knew it inside out and I just loved driving. So, when that was taken away in 2020, I think COVID-19, 2019, it came along with it. There was a year of trying to get it back and working. You can hear the wind. Is it really blustery? And um, it was just all so easy. I was just working. I worked a lot of hours because if I wasn't driving, I was doing the accounts or booking jobs on the phone or just sitting up at the airport for hours waiting for planes to come in. It was a glorious job and I loved it so much.
and then obviously I lost my dog and then obviously I cracked up and got in my car you know those of you who've been from me with me from the start know about how I sold everything up I mean I sold everything cooker I sold the cooker for about a pound I remember the guy gave me a fiver because he felt so guilty because I'd only had it a few months I just sold everything and I'd made that decision well, I thought I'd made the decision really quickly but looking back on the um, looking back on the videos I can see that I planned it I suppose that's what we do ADHD and autism you plan everything and I had planned it and I'd gone through everything and I was selling it on eBay and oh my gosh looking back on it I'm, I, I don't know how they do these things they've got people coming Yeah, so then I sold everything up, got in my car, I put some money by, I saved money up in a savings bank, so I took all that out as cash, so that I knew that when I got to the end of that cash, that was it, there was no money left. And, um, you know, then I ran out of money after touring around the country, all sorts of places I went to, didn't I? Um, and then I got my first job at Kendall at the motorway services area. That was July till November. Yeah, so in November I decided that I was going to leave, so that's when I left. So that's when I left in November, um, left the campsite. You know, I lived at that campsite. That was quite good fun, very harsh, very harsh when it was cold. God, it was cold. Um, got in the car again and toured the country and did loads of um, flex jobs, indeed flex jobs in these um, warehouses and Sainsbury's and that stocking, you know, filling up the uh, shelves with stock through the night. And that's how I had my accident with the car because I fell asleep one night on the way to work, smacked into a car in a pavement and wrote it off. So angry with that. So angry with me for falling asleep, wrecked everything. I was really stuffed then. I had to give away so much stuff. I just went and dumped it in skips. At petrol stations wherever there were like these charity skips I dumped just about everything was dumped because I had to walk I just had two cases one cases I stayed at a hotel that night divided up what I could keep what I wasn't going to keep and then got a taxi and got a train I can't remember where I went after that but um, I'm gonna think about it and I'll let you know the rest of that story um, on my next bit of videoing so I'm going to get on with my walk now because it is a gorgeous day and I'm getting a bit chilly because it's quite chilly as well I want to get on with me walk and get back so catch up with you later guys it's just so uh, pretty here can't beat getting the wind in your hair well in your cap <laughs> I was going to show you my face but you've had enough enough at looking at my face today glorious out here don't know if you can hear in the wind but honestly so here we have the Formby form so here we have the Formby sign welcome to Formby Ooh, that's a bit close up. There we go. Tells you all the walks and stuff you can do. I wonder if it tells me where that red squirrel area is. Oh, there it is, Squirrel Wood. I am there, and Squirrel Wood is here. That red circular bit says Squirrel Wood. <sighs> hmm. Gonna have to work this out. I'll catch you in a bit. Okay, so I've just asked for directions from this lady with her dog. So, oops, over there and up. Right, I got it. So, this is just gorgeous for, to come and bring your kids and play sandcastles and benches.
and watch out for squirrels as well. It's really pretty. We've got a load of benches here. Sit and have your lunch, bring your kids with a bucket and spade. So I've got another hour's walk yet. I'll go have a look, see where I'm going to get a bus from. Well, I'm pretty sure I've got a head up to form me. There's loose here, look at that, excellent news. So we're on our way out. Oh, the National Trust now. Oh, the loose, right, okay, they're fine. Had loads and loads of toilet roll, so that's fine for us, because... Blue badge, you don't have to pay. Right, I'm gonna have to go and look at my map now and see where I'm gonna walk. Um, if I'm gonna walk back to the train station or I can get a bus, so I don't really know where I am, so I can have a look now and see. Right, goodbye, National Trust. So, this, um, train station here has got bus replacement but it goes at 13.10 and the time right now is 13.10 and I'm about two minutes away so I think I'm going to miss that one so I'm going to have a look on the map again and see how far it is to walk down to Formby because I don't think it can be that far so I don't know where I'm going to make this bus I can't see a bus here at the moment but then maybe it's parked up in a car park somewhere And there goes my bus replacement. Down. Okay. I'm going to see. I have to get to Formby.
to go in and is it? Oh my, I've got a few minutes. It's left already. Oh, has it? <laughs>